Well, I thought uh, since I've been doing uh, more videoing lately and getting more comfortable with it, I guess, um, we show the very beginning of a uh, cigar box guitar, what I start with, and uh, hopefully uh, maybe show the process, uh, try to remember to get uh, at least pictures, maybe a little video of each of the steps that I take and, uh, and the finished product. So um, this is what we start with. This uh, nice Spanish cedar guitar bo uh, cigar box and a big chunk of rock maple. This will get uh, cut down, milled down, and uh, made into the neck and fingerboard. Um, so we make a neck through design. Uh, so the neck goes all the way into the box. Um, and the box is really there just for acoustic purposes. So that's step one. Start with a box and a stick. See you next time. So here we have our stick that's milled down. Not quite, uh, it's not cut to length yet or shaped at all, but it's cut down to rough size. And we've got a notch in the box. So now, the stick slides into the notch. It's hard to do with one hand. Now the stick goes in the box like that. Looks like a guitar already, doesn't it? Got a ways to go yet. So here's the next step in preparing the box. Uh, these blocks and shims are glued on. I had to bring this inside the house because it's too cold for glue out in the shop. And the neck will bolt onto these through the back and uh, hold some. the guitar. So here's another little update. Um, you can see you've got the, uh, a recess cut in the neck here, and that's to um, allow the top to vibrate when the strings are, are strummed or plucked. Um, a nice maple neck um, that's now attached to the box. So starting to look a little bit like a guitar. Pretty exciting. So it may not look like much, but this is um, the fretboard going to be, I hope, if everything goes well. This is a piece of honey locust um, left over from a friend's countertop. So um, it'll look a lot different in just a few minutes. So I've removed the, the neck from the box and I've started some preliminary shaping on that, cut away for the headstock. Um, and uh, a little bit from the back here, I've got some lines to uh, kind of guide me as when I start carving. Um, so we have a nice round profile on the back. Um, and this is the, this will be the fretboard. I told you, you wouldn't recognize it. Uh, and that'll kind of go on there like that. And uh, the next thing I have to do is um, cut the fret slots and glue that on there uh, so I can begin shaping the neck. Um, and that orange will, will uh, darken up nicely with some finish. Um, I think it's gonna look really nice. So here's our glue up for the fretboard. You can see it uh, sandwiched in there. This is just a straight piece to distribute the clamping pressure. And uh, we'll let this sit overnight. And we'll do some carving on that neck. Um, work on the headstock a little bit. Uh, get some holes in the headstock for tuning pegs. Um, 
and then wait for the mailman to bring the tuners and strings. So now it's time to start shaping the neck. We've got a selection of rasps here and files um, that will do the lion's share of the work. And uh, let's get going. some of the rough shaping done. Um, it's a lot of just feeling the shape and feeling what, uh, what feels good in the hand. The thickness is good, if that curve matches. Um, we'll start, uh, once we get to a good shape, start in with sandpaper and refine the shape and get it all smoothed out. Um, no more tool marks or ridges or bumps or square corners or blend everything all together so that the, the neck and the fretboard are, are truly one piece. I'll put a little bit of a, a curve here and, um, and here on the heel as well so it's all smooth to the touch. So as much fun as sanding and filing is to watch, um, I did in video, so you can see it's a nice round shape, it feels real comfortable in the hands. We'll do uh, further refining on the edge of the fingerboard after we get the frets in. Um, we'll measure out, put the holes in the <clears throat> for the tuning pegs um, and this is kind of neat this is not typical of what I generally do but leaving the end of the headstock rough like the stick that it came out of so just kind of add a little character to it so we started uh, putting in the frets of the fretboard here um, <clears throat> got most of them and most of them pounded in and uh, we got two more let's we'll see if we can can actually see some of this process all of these uh, slots are cut we showed that already pound it in there Let's nip that off. We got some pliers that this face is ground down pretty flat, so it cuts it pretty square. So we'll just square off this end. And then each of these has a it's shaped like a T. And I'm gonna cut this little tang at an angle. I don't know if you can see that, but at an angle so that it won't stick out so much when I start filing the frets and try to get those ends nice and smooth. There we 
are. Some frets are in. Still got a lot of work left to do to them. We'll file these edges down smooth on both ends. I've got a special file for that and I'll, I'll show that next. So just to show you these tools, this is a tiny little dead blow hammer. It's got a brass uh, face on it, head, uh, and that's softer than the fret material. And there's um, like a lead shot in there, or BBs. You can't hear them shaking around, but it's designed so that it will not bounce. Um, so any bounce that you're seeing is just because that's how I swing a hammer. And this is a, this is a fret file. And there's a, the, you can see a file set in this block at a 45 degree angle. And this part will ride on the frets and then the file will hit just the edges. This is where it gets really fussy and it will take me a long time and I won't make you watch it, but I'll show you how it looks after. So what I'm doing now is I uh, got a special little file that's smooth on the sides, on the skinny sides, and then it's got a file on the flat side. And I go around and get just the very ends of these frets just to that that big file leaves a big burr so I'm just going through and get all of these little sharp parts off and this is really it's all about feel well if you can feel a burr now you're going to feel it when you're playing so I'll just go through and so just keep feeling 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 So just keep going, both sides, and uh, and then I'll come through and and just polish the whole thing with some real fine sandpaper, and it'll smooth up all those all the marks and make it look nice and shiny. So now I can see all those fret ends are nice and. Smooth, no burrs to catch your fingers on. This uh, this process is certainly uh, new for me and is among the more intimidating parts of this process. Um, and uh, once the strings are on, we'll be able to see if any of these are high. Um, and might have to file them down if they got any string buzz or anything. So I'll go through and um, make sure that they're all uh, even so that the strings don't buzz and you get a nice um, get a nice ring to each of the strings. So the next uh, major piece I've got to work on is the nut. Um, this is a piece of moose bone uh, from a moose that was shot in Pittsburgh, New Hampshire, near the Canadian border, uh, given to me by a friend of mine. Um, so I've got a lot of work to do to get it down to the right shape and size, um, but this is the blank. So there is the nut. All ground down, fit in that groove. Um, we'll actually glue that in place. 
and then uh, file grooves in it for each of the strings in the appropriate place. Uh, and then they'll, when the strings come over, they'll go underneath the string holder and then wrap around the tuning pegs when the tuning pegs arrive. So now we are at one of the spots that I don't like the most. Making frets might be intimidating, but blowing giant holes in your cigar box is terrifying. There, two big holes in a perfectly good box. But now the sound can get out and it will make a huge difference in the volume of the instrument. So I like to put um, electronics in, uh, in my cigar box guitar so that you could plug them into an amp and we use what's called a piezo pickup, uh, which is this little disc. Um, and I'm going to countersink a hole just the right size for that to sit in there. Um, and then get a special technique for getting it so it makes contact with the top of the box, um, but is not fastened directly to the top of the box. The way these work is they turn uh, vibration into electrical impulse. So you could actually wire up one of these piezos to an LED light and tap it and it would make the light come on. Pretty neat thing, but it makes for a really cool uh, bluesy sound uh, for, uh, for these little guitars. And I'll also uh, install a quarter inch uh, jack right into the side of the box so you can plug it in to your amp if you so choose. So in the house where it's a little warmer today, I'm gonna to put some finish on this neck and leave it in here to, to dry. I'm just gonna use Danish oil. Just wanna see how different this It's going to look for that finish. You can already see the difference how that deepens, and that'll get even better the more finish goes on there. Now it's time to attach the piezo. It's all wired up. Jack is installed. And we're gonna put it right in this recess. We're gonna hold it in there with hot glue. comes to cigar box guitars, hot glue is your friend. So then, now that it's seated in there, I'm gonna cover the whole thing with hot glue. and all. I'm going to take this business card. I got to 
close the box and press down on it. You don't want to press too hard so that it flexes, but just so that that card is making contact with the top, and none of the glue sticks to the top of the box. That way it'll be able to get the vibration without being stuck. Should be good. So our piezo is in, our neck is installed. The next thing we'll have to work on uh, is the bridge and a hinge that will uh, mount back here. Um, that will actually be our string holder. So choosing the material for the bridge um, is always kind of a, it's a fun thing for me because I'm making a guitar out of basically junk <laughs> stuff laying around pieces of wood that are of no other value uh, and an old cigar box. But when it comes to making the bridge, I like to uh, use something that's kind of personal. So I have this little piece of wood right here. Um, every piece of wood has a story. And this piece of wood uh, used to be a kitchen chair in my house. So... Now it's gonna be a bridge. So there's the bridge all finished, or mostly once the strings are on, I'll be able to adjust the height of that. So again, this is what it started like. Piece of our old kitchen chair. Now is a floating, floating bridge set at uh, be 19 inches so 19 inch scale so what we have left is to install this hinge um, for the it will be a string holder and the strings will uh, go through these holes here um, and then over our floating bridge and uh, and then install the tuners um, up in the headstock and then uh, to be ready for setting the string heights getting the intonation uh, all set up and uh, ready to play so what I've got right now they have the, the hinge installed and that is um, that's screwed right into the neck so that's all one piece now um, and I've got Holes drilled for the uh, tuning tuning pegs, and just pressing these uh, bushings in, and the tuners will run right through those, nice and smooth. So the next step will be um, installing these tuning machines, um, we'll pre-drill holes and put in these teeny tiny screws and, uh, and then we'll start, we're ready to start working on the strings. So I've got uh, the first two tuning machines installed and I'll just should I have put in the I put in the last one? Just mark the holes or the scratch all. And pre-drill the holes just a little bit just to help this tiny screws get started. Uh, it's important that uh, when installing the tuning machines, um, the gear is always on the downhill side of the actual tuning peg. 
That way the string tension, which will be pulling in this direction, will always be pushing that gear harder uh, into the tuning peg itself um, so that you'll always have a good tuning action. There, all three tuners ready to go, ready for strings. So one last trick I like to do um, before putting the strings on is uh, it's a string tree, for lack of a better uh, lack of a better word, uh, just two eye bolts, um, and we'll thread thread this machine screw through and the strings will go underneath them and uh, bring bring the strings down at an angle and then into the um, tuners themselves so to uh, have downward tension on the strings to keep them uh, solid in the nut. So now it's time for the real fun put in the strings. Um, this will be tuned G, D, G. Uh, so I've got a low, middle, and middle, uh, 0.042, 0.030, and 0.022 strings. This is always the hardest part. So really the fussiest part of this whole process is setting the action, getting this, the nut low enough so that uh, you don't bend the strings when you play a note, but high enough so that it doesn't buzz um, down the way. So what I'll do is uh, I'll get these strings on there, tightened up, take a look at this height, um, probably loosen it up, uh, file, file this notch a little bit deeper and get that just right uh, so you're not bending the string to actually play the notes. So here's what we got. Strings are on. Um, the action is pretty high, so I'm gonna have to do some finessing here on the nut to get the action down where it doesn't feel like you're having to bend the string to play this first fret. That's not a big deal down down here, but up, up here where a lot of chords are played, um, you end up uh, 
actually bending the note sharp if this is uh, this is too high. So what what I'll do is instead of pulling the nut out and grinding the whole thing, I just pop that string out a little bit and file that groove. And just keep popping it back in there until it feels like the action is pretty good. Um, and this is probably not the proper loopier way to do it. Probably pop that whole nut out, grind it all at once. But I'm not a proper luthier, so. And what I'm using is just a triangular file. Uh, so it makes that a nice V notch for that. So got a little ways to go, but I'll keep working on it. You don't have to watch. So now we got uh, strings all on um, over the floating bridge there, and I'll still play around with the intonation a little bit, which will uh, involve um, moving this back and forth so that um, when you play uh, notes on the 12th fret, it's just as uh, this G is the same as the open G. So that, that's uh, the beauty of the floating bridge. So you can adjust that around and try to at least get it pretty close. Um, so she's all strung up uh, and the strings are G, D, G. Um, and it sounds like this. So anyway, um, it's cold out here, so the tuning is um, pretty bad, and the strings still have to stretch out. Um, but the next time you see it, uh, she'll be in tune and singing like an angel. Okay, so we're at the last stage with the cigar box guitar. It's all finished. Um, and now we're going to play a song that we learned to play today. So ready to 
me down above the sea. Then he sang a song of hope for the last time. I have a dream, my hope will come true. That you're here with me, and I'm here with you. I wish that the earth, sea, the sky up above it would send me someone to love her. Listening from the sea below to the lovely volcano. Looking all around, but she could not see him. He tried to let her know that she was not alone. But with no lover, his song was all done. He filled the sea with tears. Watching his dreams disappear And she remembered what his song meant to her And they were so happy to finally meet above the sea And now together their lover grew and grew No longer were they alone Hawaii as their home <laughs> something like that hope you enjoyed this video it's been a lot of fun working on this project and uh i hope it's been uh insightful i don't know enlightening that's the word thanks <laughs>